चलो सो टुडे वी विल बी डिस्कसिंग राइट हेडिंग अकाउंटिंग फॉर स्पेशल पर्पस एंटिटीज अकाउंटिंग फॉर स्पेशल पर्पस व्हीकल्स ओके सो राइट दिस डाउन अकाउंटिंग फॉर क्रिएट एन SPV. Pull these loans and sell these pooled pool of loans to the SPV. It will sell the pool of loans to the SPV. And uh, once these loans are sold, it is a legal sale, and the loans no longer belong to the bank; they belong to the SPV. Now SPV would issue bonds backed by the pool of loans so the spv would issue bonds which are backed by this pool of loans right now the bond holder would uh, the bond holder would pay the issue price to the spv and uh, the spv will use this money to pay for the purchase of loans right now the borrowers of these uh, loans would no longer pay their emis to the bank the borrowers of these loans would pay their emis to the spv sir so, isme agar borrower ko paisa nahi aata hai to recovery ki responsibility kiski rehti hai spv right acha because once the loans are the sold then the loans belong to the spv it's a legal sale the bank has nothing to do with it the bank has nothing to do with it Okay. so and the spv will use these emis to pay coupon and interest to the bond holders right so this was the structure of spv that we had discussed in level 1 right and we had also discussed that if the bank went bankrupt the creditors of the bank do not have any recourse on the assets of the spv the only recourse they have is on the assets of the bank and we had also said that in level 1 we had also said that this spv is bankruptcy remote the spv is bankruptcy remote what do you mean by that this basically means that you know if the bank goes bankrupt it won't affect the spv the spv would continue to carry on its operations right so this was our basic discussion on spv right so today we will be discussing accounting for spe spv right accounting for spv spe both are the same thing right now guys before 2001 assets liabilities revenue and expenses of the spv were not reported in the books of the sponsors in our example sponsor is the bank right so before 2001 assets liabilities revenue and expenses of the spv were not reported in the books of the sponsor in our example the sponsor is the bank however things changed after 2001 when enron abused the use of sp guys any idea who enron was anyone is anybody is having any idea what enron was what What energy company? company? Yes. So Enron was an energy company, right? And uh, um, it traded extensively in energy derivatives. And the company had, you know, they hit massive trading losses, ultimately leading to one of the largest accounting scandals in the recent history, right? So it hit a lot of losses, and it hit these losses using using the spe spv structure right so 
let us understand the mechanism used by Enron to do this accounting manipulation. Now, Enron had made a lot of investments and these investments were loss making and it did not want to report these losses on its income statement. It did not want to report its these losses on its financial statement. So, you know, it created a very complicated structure through which it evaded or it avoided reporting these losses. We will discuss this complicated structure today. So, what Enron did is that it asked its friends, it asked its friends to set up an SPE, right? Now, these friends were usually the relative of relatives of employees of Enron. Right. So, just let me scroll down. Okay. So, understand this very carefully. You will uh, appreciate why why we are studying such accounting. Right. So, this is my Enron. Enron would ask its friends to set up a SPE, right? SPE, SPV, whatever you choose to call it. It's okay. right. So, these friends were relatives of employees of Enron and, you know, these friends of Enron would contribute a minimum amount of equity in this SPV, right? They would invest a minimum amount of equity in this SP, so for example, they say they invest three hundred thousand dollars in this SP, right? They invest three hundred thousand dollars equity in this SP. Please, uh, they invest three hundred thousand dollars as equity, right? Or they invest three hundred thousand dollars in you to purchase the equity of the SP, right? So the catch word is SP, right? Now, this $300,000, please understand this, guys. The friends won't invest this $3,000 from their own pocket. Enron would give them this $300,000. Enron would give them this money. And they, in turn, would invest this in the SP. Right? So, friends are not investing from their own pocket. Enron is giving this money to friends and company and friends or company in turn is investing this money in the SP, right? And by, you know, by contributing $300,000 in the SP, basically, the friend and company own 100% equity in the SP, right? By contributing this $300,000 in the SP, the friends and company own 100% of the SP. Now what the SP do, now please understand what the SP we will do. Now what the SP does is that uh, it goes to a bank and uh, tells the bank that I want a loan of 9.7 million. Now bank would say that uh, Bank would say that the S, you know, bank would say, bank would tell the SPV that hey, you are a new company, we are not going to lend you any money. So to this SPV would say that uh, you know, Enron would guarantee the loan that we take, right? So bank, SP approaches the bank for a 9.7 million dollar loan. The bank says that I can't lend you money, you are a new company. SP says that. Enron would guarantee the loan that you give to me. Now the bank is more than happy, more than willing to lend as Enron was a very famous and a reputed company back then. Right. So what the bank does is that it gives a loan of 9.7 million to SP and Enron Enron basically guarantees the loan. Okay. And how? what is the collateral that Enron pledges, guys? Any idea? 
what collateral did uh, enron pledge to guarantee the loan the derivative position no so a enron pledged its shares its stock as a collateral to guarantee the loan that the spe had taken right so it would basically pledge its shares <coughs> pledge its stock to guarantee the loan acha sir jaise sp matlab uske paas koi pool of assets hoga na to yahan pe sp ka pool kya tha matlab assets ka abhi main bataun so it it would it was this sp was created for a specific purpose i will tell you what specific purpose this sp was created right this this entity was created for a specific purpose okay now the structure is enron gave 300000 dollars to friends friends and company invested this 300000 dollars in the sp by investing this 300000 dollars in the sp friends and company own 100% equity in sp sp goes to a bank asks for a 9.7 million dollar loan bank says i won't lend you you are a new company sp says that okay enron would guarantee this loan now the bank is willing to lend because enron was a famous company at that point of time and enron guaranteed this loan by pledging its stock so this was the basic structure guys are we good any doubt up till now so now what is the capital structure of the sp or how does the balance sheet of the sp look like there would be how much equity 300000 dollar equity and debt would be how much 97 million right so total uh, equity plus debt is 10 million and on the asset side we'll have a cash of 10 million now guys tell me how is the cash totaling up to 10 million please tell me how is the cash of the sp totaling up to 10 million guys sorry टोटलिंग में गड़बड़ है 9.7 मिलियन कितना है 97 लाख एंड दिस वुड बी यस सेवन जीरोस यस सो हाउ इज द कैश टोटलिंग अप टू 10 मिलियन 3 मिलियन आ सॉरी 300000 वाज कंट्रीब्यूटेड बाय फ्रेंड्स एंड कंपनी एंड योर बेसिकली 9.7 मिलियन और 97 लाख वाज रेज्ड थ्रू डेट राइट Guys, have you understood this? Any doubts? Bolo, please. Anyone is having any doubts here? No, yes. Okay. And basically, guys, this debt was this debt is guaranteed by Enron by pledging its shares. Right. So we'll write this down as well. This debt is guaranteed by Enron. by pledging its shares okay now this structure is in front of us 100% of the equity of this sp is owned by whom guys by enron or by friends guys please tell me 100% equity is owned by enron or by friends of enron so on paper to friends hi hoga on paper friends right अनिल समझ में आ रहा है ये बात अनिल हेलो कुणाल ये बात समझ में आ रहा है यस सर यस सर हां सो ऑन पेपर यस द 100% इक्विटी ऑफ दिस पर्टिकुलर एसपीई इज ओन्ड बाय फ्रेंड्स ऑफ एनरोन 100% इक्विटी ऑफ दिस एसपीई इज ओन्ड बाय फ्रेंड्स ऑफ now the game starts now we had said that uh, you know enron had a lot of loss making investments it had a lot of bad investments now what this what enron would do is that uh, enron would sell these bad investments to the spe 
sell bad investments to the SP. Right. So, uh, just like uh, Ashe, just like the bank was selling the pool of loans to the SPV, here mm. Enron is selling these bad investments to the SP. Right. Samaj Maya bhi, Ashe. Uh, and uh, how is the SP? SP how SP is the SP? Cash paying, will supplement karega, na? SP, how is the SP paying the bank? How is the SP paying Enron? One crore of cash. Hai. From the loan, right? From the loan that it had taken from the bank and the equity that was uh, invested by friends. And that equity was basically contributed by Enron, right? So the SPV would pay Enron from the loan. SP would uh, pay Enron from the loan that it had taken plus plus the you know the cash that was contributed by friends of company uh, you know that was contributed by friends and company to buy equity in the SP right so plus by the cash contributed by friends so this is what Enron was doing right guys are we good with this structure Asha big structure Samaj Maha Gya is it crystal clear to everyone yes, Anil yes. Samaj Maha Gya Yes, sir. Yes. So, what is Enron doing? Enron is basically selling its bad investments to itself and paying itself from the loan it himself had guaranteed. Guys, can you understand this? Enron is basically selling to himself and paying by the loan, paying from the loan that it had guaranteed. Right? So, sir, a question. Hai. Uh -huh. say, uh... Enron ने अपना SP जो मतलब सॉरी जो कचरा एसेट था वो तो SP को दे दिया राइट अभी उससे कैश फ्लो तो आ नहीं रहा होगा ऑब्वियसली तो SP बैंक को भी लोन पे नहीं कर पाएगा और ये तो मतलब ये तो काफी फंडामेंटल है लेकिन Enron फिर उस चक्कर में अपना शेयर क्यों देगा जब उसको पता ही है कि SP तो इवेंचुअली पैसा दे नहीं पाएगा उसको और उसका शेयर तो मतलब बैंक ले लेगा Enron उसका Enron उसको वही तो मैं बता रहा हूं इट इट डिड नॉट वांट टू सी Enron वाज इन अ ट्रैप right and mm. if this you know if these bad investments were reported in its books if if these losses were reported in its books to wo to khatam ho jata right so it basically did this to delay delay the inevitability right delay the inevitability ki bhai uh, you know we to matlab taanne ke liye 3 4 saal thoda sa तानने के लिए वो सोचा कि तीन चार साल में कुछ ठीक हो जाएगा तो ताकि हम खड़ा हो जाएं फिर से ठीक है तो ये बेसिकली उस प्रोसेस में किया था कि थोड़ा सा हम अपना बैंकरप्सी को डिले कर दे थोड़ा हम अपना बेसिकली फेल होने के लिए थोड़ा सा टाइम बाय कर ले राइट सो इट वाज डूइंग दिस दैट इज व्हाट इट वाज दैट इज व्हाई इट वाज डूइंग दिस राइट सो एनरोन वुड सेल इट्स बैड इन्वेस्टमेंट्स टू द एसपी राइट and it will sell these bad investments to the SPV at a profit. It will sell these bad investments to the SPV at a profit. And the SPV would use this cash received from, you know, the SPV would uh, use the cash it received from the loan to pay Enron for the purchase of bad investments. Right. Now, Enron would avoid consolidating and one would avoid consolidating the financials of the SP. How? It will say that I do not control the SP. I do not own any equity in the SP. I do not have any voting rights. So why should I consolidate? Why should I bring the assets, liabilities, revenue and expenses of the SP in my books? Why should I bring the financials of the SP in the books of Enron, when I own no equity, when I own no voting right. So by using this complicated structure, it is achieving three things. 
it is achieving three things first thing it is achieving is that please tell me what is it achieving credit rating ha huh? apni book skip kar li na it was avoiding booking losses on the bad investments and not only did it avoid booking losses on its bad investments enron booked the gain it booked the gain by selling these bad investments at a profit right it sold these bad investments at a profit to the spv right so it booked the gain by selling these loss making assets at a profit so it basically reported it you know uh, and known use this structure to report higher profitability ratios okay guys any any other goal that enron achieved by this structure the third thing that it achieved was basically enron also you know did not report the loan that the sp had sp had taken right it enron did not have to report that loan in its books the loans were shown in the books of the SPV or the SPV. Although the loans were guaranteed by Enron, Enron did not have to report these loans in its books. Right? So write this down. Although Enron guaranteed these loans, although uh, Enron guaranteed these loans. did not have to report it in its books and this resulted in lower debt equity ratio right this resulted in lower debt equity ratio so by using this complicated structure it was avoiding booking losses in its uh, you know avoiding booking losses on its bad investments on its loss making investments not only did it avoid uh, booking losses on its bad making investments it reported a profit by selling these bad investments at a profit to the spv and although enron had guaranteed the loan the spe had taken it did not have to report the loan on its books right so this structure has helped achieve uh, you know two things enron achieved two things first was higher profitability this was achieved by selling these bad investments at a profit and better solvency by reporting a lower debt equity ratio right so it was achieving these two things so basically it was defrauding the bank right it was uh, trying to do a bank fraud and it was basically selling bad investments to itself and paying itself from the loan it had guaranteed but i was avoiding reporting these loans in its books right so total fraud total masti right he was enjoying its life it was reporting higher net income and reporting this net income to its investors that see i am showing you quarter on quarter growth and this was uh, you know helping uh, um, you know to increase the stock price right because the company was showing quarter on quarter net income growth the stock price was increasing market price was increasing everything was hunky dory right everything was hunky dory right acha sir ye shuru mein jo 
फ्रेंड्स एंड फैमिली को तीन लाख रुपए कैश दिया था इक्विटी के लिए तो उसको अपने बुक्स में दिखाया कैसे हो गया लाइक एक्सपेंसेस में डाल दिया ना इन्वेस्टमेंट इन फ्रेंड्स एंड कंपनी दिखाया अच्छा ओके सो नाउ द आईडिया इज गाइस हु इज कंट्रोलिंग दिस एसपीवी इज आर द आर फ्रेंड्स एंड कंपनी कंट्रोलिंग द एसपीवी और और इज एनरोन कंट्रोलिंग द एसपीवी who is controlling the sp enron yes enron is controlling naturally because basically 97% of the capital i see 97% of the capital in the sp was being financed by enron by guaranteeing the debt raised by the sp had enron not guaranteed the loan the bank would not have lent in the first place so enron is controlling the sp without having any equity in the sp please understand this this is a very important point without having any equity in the sp without having any equity in the sp enron is controlling the sp and it does not have any equity it does not have any voting right but in spite of all that he is controlling the sp right and how is it controlling the sp by guaranteeing the debt raised by the sp and had enron not guaranteed the debt the bank would not have lent in the first place so the sp was structured in such a way that enron controls the sp in spite of having no equity in spite of having no voting rights friends of enron held 100% equity and held 100% voting rights right friends of enron held 100% equity and held 100% voting rights but they were not controlling the sp right enron was controlling the sp friends of enron were not controlling the sp in spite of them having 100% equity in spite of them having 100% voting rights right so now what happened guys how did enron fail i'll tell you now enron had pledged its shares to guarantee the loan now you know enron's stock price started to fall now why because market was able to grasp that something is fishy so enron's stock price started to fall right stock markets are always ahead of us right they are always forward looking they are always ahead of us right so maybe some accountants of uh, enron would have leaked this maybe you know from somewhere some information was being some insider information was flowing into the market so enron stock prices started to fall so guys what happened how would how would a fall in enron's stock price affect this structure can someone tell me how would the fall in enron stock price affect this structure वो लोग कुनाल आशीर्वाद मतलब बैंक को जो गारंटी दिया हुआ है प्लेज किए हुए शेयर वो नीचे जा रहे हैं तो मतलब बेसिकली बैंक का जो सिक्योरिटी दैट इज वर्थलेस राइट यस सो द वैल्यू ऑफ द प्लेज्ड कोलैटरल स्टार्टेड टू फॉल बिकॉज़ स्टॉक प्राइसेस स्टार्टेड टू फॉल राइट द स्टॉक वाज केप्ट एज अ कोलैटरल विद द बैंक सो इफ द स्टॉक प्राइस स्टार्टेड टू फॉल द वैल्यू ऑफ द कोलैटरल स्टार्टेड टू फॉल सो नेचुरली और कोलैटरल बैंक वुड वांट मोर शेयर्स एज प्लेज right so that's what bank asked bank asked enron that see the value of the collateral is following uh, following falling please pledge more shares what did enron do enron issued more shares and pledged it as collateral as additional shares were issued and pledged existing shareholders existing shareholders of enron did not like this why guys why didn't they like it because it was resulting in equity dilution right it was resulting in equity dilution enron was issuing more shares to pledge it so existing shareholders sold their share which resulted in a further fall in stock price so what did enron do guys what did enron do to increase the stock price bolo socho enron kya kiya hoga what did enron do to increase the stock price अकाउंट्स मैनिपुलेट करके प्रॉफिटेबिलिटी 
it <laughs> the you know it contributed some money to its friends the friends contributed that money to the sp now these friends own 100% equity in sp2 the sp2 would go to the bank ask for a loan bank says i won't lend you money you are a new company so sp will tell that okay enron would guarantee my loans so bank would now lend to the sp2 and enron would guarantee these loans by pledging shares right and see enron would then sell its bad investments to the sp2 at a profit now when it will sell it at a profit then naturally enron would post higher net income and it will boast in front of the world see i have such good new, good net income i am giving quarter on quarter profits and you know it will do this it will try to inflate its net income it will try to report illusionary net profits such that stock price increases right such that stock price increases right so but then again guys smart people were there in the market they kept shorting enron stock because they were aware that enron is doing this so the stock price uh, again fell the and to increase stock price what did enron do it created another sp same structure why did it create another sp to inflate its earnings to prop up stock price this circle went on and on on and on until one day enron's stock fell to 1 dollar and uh, that forced enron into bankruptcy right so in december 2001 i think enron uh, filed for bankruptcy and that's one that was one of the biggest corporate scandals in us history right and after the scandal after the enron scandal financial regulators came up with guidelines new guidelines right the old guidelines were that the sponsor cannot sponsor need not consolidate the financials of the sp in its own books right the previous rules were these that the uh, you know that the sponsor need not uh, uh, need not uh, consolidate the financials of the sp in its own books but after the enron scandal things changed right now how was enron how was he able to do this because see he would say to the uh, you know to the um, regulators said that see i don't own any equity in the sp so i am not obligated to consolidate its financials i don't have any voting rights right so why should i consolidate its financials in my book so by using this mechanism it was able to cut itself from the sp right it was able to distinguish itself from the sp but after the enron scandal things changed uh, right uh, the regulators understood that how this sp structure can be abused so they came up with a new set of regulations guys are we clear with this structure abhi tak jo main bola are we clear yes sir so this was a beautiful case your cfa books don't tell you this but i am telling you this because this will help you understand what's written in the book now we'll discuss what's written in the book right so please pay attention now now 2008 ke bhi sp ki wajah se wo pura contagion phaila tha na financial now mortgage back securities lekin wo tab tab wo chakkar nahi hua tha tab tab kya hua tha ki property prices ghat raha tha bahut zor se ha तो वो उसकी वजह से हुआ था दैट वाज नॉट एन अकाउंटिंग मैनिपुलेशन ठीक है ना दैट वाज नॉट एन अकाउंटिंग मैनिपुलेशन सो इन 2001 फाइनेंशियल रेगुलेटर्स से सेड दैट वी लुक एट द सब्सटेंस एंड नॉट एट द फॉर्म राइट वी लुक एट द सब्सटेंस एंड नॉट एट द फॉर्म so see guys here they said that this spe this spe is a 
variable interest entity vie this spe is a variable interest entity what is a variable interest entity can someone tell me this spe is a vie variable interest entity what is a variable interest entity anil kunal sabko samajh mein aa raha hai na please anil samajh mein aa raha hai kya ho raha hai hello yeah yeah kunal anil kahan hai <laughs> so gaya anil jawab hi nahi de raha chalo koi nahi आशा तो 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 क्लियर है फिर सवाल से ही समझ में आ रहा सो व्हाट इज़ अ वेरिएबल इंटरेस्ट एंटिटी प्लीज़ टेल मी सो प्लीज़ राइट डाउन अनिल तुम कहा है वॉशरूम गया होगा ओके अनिल आ गया ओके सो वेरिएबल इंटरेस्ट एंटिटी इज एन एंटिटी that is financially controlled by other party that do not own a majority voting interest right so variable interest entity is an entity that is you know financially controlled by some other party who does not own a majority voting interest in the vie right so please write this down i am writing this as well So guys, you write this down. A variable interest entity is an entity that is financially controlled by other parties that do not own a that do not hold a majority voting interest. That do not hold a majority voting interest. Now, basically, U.S. GAAP said that. U.S. GAAP after 2001 said that that uh, the SPV would be considered a VIE if the following conditions are satisfied. Right? It said that the SPE would be considered a VIE if the following conditions are satisfied. Just a second, guys. So, I mean. ये जो एसपी का मतलब ये जो फैंसी सा मतलब बेसिकली जो नाम है मतलब ऑन पेपर थे नॉर्मल प्राइवेट लिमिटेड कंपनी होगी हां 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 ऑन पेपर होगी ठीक है सो यूएस गैप सेस मैं क्या बोल रहा था हां सो यूएस गैप सेस दैट एसपीई वुड बी कंसीडर्ड अ वीआई if the following conditions are satisfied first condition now what we are see now please hear me out really carefully because whatever i am telling you now is not available in any book now it must be it's there in your cpa books it's there in your other accounting books but per se it has not been explained in our cfa institute material so the first thing is that the sp would be considered a vie when at risk equity at risk equity is not sufficient now what do you mean by at risk equity is not sufficient so basically you know regulators will look at the equity of the sp and compare it to the assets of the sp now if the equity of the sp if the equity of the sp is less than 10% of its total assets then regulator said that this spe is a vie right this spe is a vie if its equity is less than 10% of its assets right so i'll explain this with an example so the regulators basically said that okay we'll uh, look at the equity of the sp and compare it to the assets of the sp if equity is less than 10% of its assets they would say that equity is not sufficient they would say that equity is not sufficient to cover future losses right so understand this guys guys just like 
profits for the year are added to your shareholders equity in the same way losses uh, would be deducted from equity and if the spe if the spe has very low equity then uh, you know repeated losses would wipe off equity guys can you understand this if losses you know your losses are deducted from the loss that a company that a loss that an spe would give every year would be deducted from its equity and if the spe has very low equity then repeated losses can wipe out its equity right and if its equity is wiped out then uh, spe would need further funding from the sponsor right so they basically said that if the spe is very thinly capitalized if its equity is less than 10% of its assets then spe is a variable interest entity मतलब an SP being a variable interest entity is a bad thing, right? No, no. So we are speaking in terms of accounting. कि accounting कैसे करना? I will tell you that you know if the SP is a variable interest entity, then how to account for it? ठीक है? And it's obviously the purpose is there is a larger purpose, right? We can't say it's a bad thing, but it has a larger purpose. We can say that. Okay. <coughs> Now, if equity investors lack any of the following, Anil, hey, hello, Anil, कहाँ गया? If equity investors lack any of the following, Okay. Now, if equity investors lack decision-making rights, if equity investors lack decision-making rights, so if equity investors lack decision-making rights, then your SPE is a VIE, right? So please understand this. Uh, you know, in the example that I just gave you. in the enron case the friends of enron own 100% equity in the sp friends of enron own 100% equity in the sp but did did they have any decision making rights guys did they control the sp can you tell me please tell me did they control did friends of enron control the sp no no so they don't didn't have any decision making rights and that is why the spe was a variable interest entity right enron was basically controlling the spe by guaranteeing its debt friends of enron in spite of owning 100% equity in, in spite of having all the voting rights in spite of having 100% voting rights were not controlling friends of enron were not controlling in spite of 100% equity control the second condition is that anil है कि नहीं चलो ओके सो इफ इक्विटी इन्वेस्टर्स लैक ऑब्लिगेशन टू अब्सॉर्ब लॉसेस देन टू योर एसपीई इज अ वीआई इक्विटी इन्वेस्टर्स लैक ऑब्लिगेशन टू अब्सॉर्ब लॉसेस guys now again with the uh enron example friends of enron were equity investors in the sp friends of enron but had no obligation to absorb expected losses as technically they had not invested anything in the sp now enron had given them 300000 and they had invested that amount in the sp so they had not invested anything from their own pocket so they were not expected to absorb any losses right so they had not invested anything from their own pocket absorbing any loss is out of question right guys think of this if you don't invest anything from your own pocket then what do you stand to lose you stand to lose nothing you lose you lose money only when you invest something from your own pockets right so if equity investors lack obligation of absorbing losses then 
डी एस पी ई इज अ वी आई एंड दी लास्ट केस विच इज यू नो इक्विटी इन्वेस्टर्स लैक दी राइट टू रिसीव रेसिड्यूअल रिसर्न लैक दी राइट टू रिसीव रेसिड्यूअल रिटर्न ओके so see guys these friends of enron these equity investors had not invested a single penny from their own pockets right so since they had not invested anything from their own pocket they had no right to receive any residual returns right and if uh, you know the equity investors in an sp lack the right to receive residual returns then to your spe is a bi right so in these cases the spe equals vie right and if spe is a vie then it must be consolidated in the books of the primary beneficiary right it must be consolidated in the books of the primary beneficiary using the acquisition method right if spe equals vie then the financials of the spe must be consolidated it must be consolidated in the books of the primary beneficiary now who is the primary beneficiary in our example guys the example that we just spoke who was who is the primary beneficiary ashay bol who is the primary beneficiary in our example प्राइमरीफिशरी or we have to consolidate the financials of the sp or we have to bring you know we basically have to bring please write down if sp equals vie we bring 100% of the assets liabilities revenue and expenses of the spe in the books of the primary beneficiary to sir koi other matlab koi aur aisa case ho jisme ek subsidiary hai sp nahi hai right uh-huh. and usme matlab ye sari conditions hai to uh-huh. wahan pe matlab sorry is in conditions ka ulta hai right wahan pe ki jo us subsidiary ke इक्विटी में If you own more than fifty, but you don't control it, right? Hmm. So maybe the company is being controlled by the government, right? Uh-huh. Company that you are that you bought fifty uh, percent equity in is being controlled by the company. So if you don't control it, but own more than fifty percent, then you won't consolidate. You will use the equity method. ठीक है आशय आगे बढ़े हाँ so you bring 100% of the assets liabilities revenue of the expenses of the sp in the books of the primary beneficiary or we basically assume that the primary beneficiary is the parent and the sp is the subsidiary right so we basically assume here that uh, the primary beneficiary is parent 
and uh, SPV SPE is your is its subset. Right. Okay, and we'll consolidate using the acquisition method. We already know the acquisition method. Right. We had discussed that we do not bring the equity of the subsidiary in the books of the parent. So here we won't bring the equity of the SP in the books of the in the books of the primary beneficiary. We'll do not bring the equity of the SP in the books of the primary beneficiary. Okay. Guys, now are we good here? All good. Kunal, sun raha hai? Yaad Kunal bhi gaya hai. Samaj mein aa raha hai baat? Kunal, hello, hello. Kunal Anil, hello. Yes, Anil kahan gaya? Aaj Anil hi nahi gaya. Bhai. Pata nahi kya hua. Isko phone mila kare. क्लास ओके नाउ गाइस से दिस इज द विल मेक द बैलेंस शीट ऑफ अ कंपनी अब बड़ा ध्यान से सुनना है सो दिस इज बैलेंस शीट ऑफ कंपनी पी राइट and this is the balance sheet cash is 30 accounts receivable is 60 others is 40 60 is 140 equity is uh, 83 debt is uh, 20 current liability is 27 what is the debt equity ratio of the company guys please calculate 20 by 83 which is around 0 0.24 okay now this company wants to borrow 55 million dollars in capital by pledging its accounts receivable it need it wishes to borrow fifty five million by pledging accounts receivable right now it wants to borrow uh, 55 million by pledging its accounts receivable now accounts receivable can be pledged as a collateral to secure a loan and this is known as account receivable financing or it's known as factoring and it's a common way to obtain financing and when account receivables are pledged as a collateral the bank you know Bank may lend funds that are based on a percentage of the value of accounts receivable. Right. And the borrower remains responsible for collecting payment from the customer. Right. So if company P pledges accounts receivable uh, to raise a loan, the bank will give a loan which is less than 60 million. Right. If it pledges this 60 million to raise a loan from the bank, that bank will you know lend less than 60 million it will keep some additional collateral and uh, you know the company p remains responsible uh, for collecting payments from its uh, customers from its debtors right so say company p pledges its accounts pledges its uh, accounts receivable of 60 million to the bank and the bank would usually lend a percentage of the value of accounts receivable so say bank lends only 55 million keeps 5 million additional collateral right so bank lends only 55 million keeps 5 million additional collateral so guys how would the balance sheet of company p look after taking this loan guys bolo asha bol kaisa lagega hello so, repeat karna fir se, Basically, what I'm telling is that uh, company P has pledged its accounts receivable of 60 million to the bank. Bank lent only 55 million, kept 5 million additional collateral. 
right so now after borrowing this 55 million uh how would the balance sheet of uh, company p look like no liability side pe wo debt bad jayega aur debt to equity ratio bhi bad jayega aur cash bhi badega very good so my equity would be 83 debt would be 50 plus uh, 20 plus 55 right so debt would increase by the amount borrowed uh company has borrowed 55 million so debt would increase by 55 plus 20 75 and current liability would remain the same and yahan pe cash would increase by cash would increase by the amount borrowed that is 30 plus 55 85 right so cash would increase by 55 so cash would become 85 it was previously 30 company borrowed 55 so cash became 85 accounts receivable will be in our books though we have pledged it it still will will be still in our books why because we have pledged it we have not sold it had we sold accounts receivable then it won't appear in our books since we have pledged it it still remains if we would have sold it it would have been removed from our books and other assets remain 40 so balance sheet total would tally 60 40 184 right and the debt equity would be 75 by 83 around 0.9 so the debt equity ratio of the company increased from 0.24 to 0.9 once it borrowed 55 million by raising 50, you know once it borrowed 55 million by pledging its accounts receivable now before 2001 what companies did was they basically borrowed money without increasing debt equity they borrowed money without increasing their debt equity guys how would do they do that using the spe structure now we'll do the same thing using you know we'll understand uh, a complicated way of doing the doing, doing what we already doing what we just discussed ye yeah, enron ke baad wo uh, socks act aaya tha na सार्वेंसी ऑक्सली एक्ट हां हां उसी ये सब वही ये सब ठीक किया था ओके सो हियर इज माय कंपनी पी कुणाल देखो समझ में आ रहा है कुणाल नहीं हम्म हां समझ आ रहा है दिस इज योर कंपनी पी दिस इज फ्रेंड्स ऑफ कंपनी पी देन वी हैव एन SPV and we'll have a bank. Just a second. We'll have a bank. Okay. So now company B, what it does is now the goal of company B is to take take a loan without increasing the debt equity ratio, and this was possible before 2001. Now what company P would do is that it would give five uh, million to its friends, right? And the friends would invest this five million in the SP. right and by investing this 5 million they will have 100% equity in spv right so friends will have hundred percent equity in spv by investing 5 million right now what the spv will do the spv will go to a bank and ask for a loan right so sp would tell me that here also the company wish to borrow 55 million now the spv will say that okay i want to borrow 55 million sp will go to the bank and tell them that i want to borrow 55 million right and in the first alternative also see company was uh, borrowing 55 million against its accounts receivable right so here the sp v is borrowing the same amount 
now the bank would tell the spv say see spv you are a new company i can't lend you money so spv will say that okay company p would guarantee my loan right now the bank would be willing to lend to the spv so the bank would lend 55 million to the spv okay now how does the balance sheet of the spv look like it has uh, 5 million in equity and this equity is owned entirely by friends of company p and it has 55 million in debt and on the asset side we have cash of 60 million right 5 million is coming from equity 55 million is coming from debt right okay guys are we good here have you understood this please ashay kunal abhi tak sab samajh mein aa raha hai ha sir now what company p will do is company p before you know company p had an accounts receivable of 60 million you know in its opening balance sheet in its starting balance sheet it had a accounts receivable of 60 billion so what it will do company p will sell the accounts receivable worth 60 million sell accounts receivable worth 60 million to the spv and the spv has 60 million in cash it will use this cash to pay company p right pays 60 million in cash to company p now after this transaction how will the balance sheet of sp look like guys equity and debt would remain the same but cash would be replaced by accounts receivable right because cash worth 60 million is has been used by the spv to buy the accounts receivable so this is how the balance sheet of spv would look after sale of accounts receivable okay and how would the balance sheet of uh, company p look like guys Okay, so this was the balance sheet. I'll just copy this balance sheet uh, below. Right, I'll just copy this balance sheet. This was the original balance sheet. I'll just copy this. I'll copy it here. Right, so this was the original balance sheet. Now, after this transaction, how will the balance sheet of company P look like? it will look like this now company p paid cash worth 5 million to friends right so its cash balance would reduce by 5 million and it received how much 60 million from the sp so cash goes down by 5 and increases by 60 so cash increases by 55 million right so cash was initially 30 now it becomes 85 right How did this happen? Thirty minus five. Five was paid to friends, and uh, the company P received sixty million by selling its accounts receivable. So cash balance is thirty minus five plus sixty, which is eighty-five. Its accounts receivable has been sold, so it won't appear in the books. Now please understand this: accounts receivable will appear in the books when you pledge it to secure a loan, but it won't appear in your books once you've sold it. right once you sold it you no know accounts receivable does not belong to you anymore right and then we have your other assets which was 40 and we'll report an investment in friends which is 5 so asset total is 130 and uh, my liability total would remain the same equity would be 83 debt would be 20 and uh, non current liability would be 27 right so guys this is how you know companies were allowed to report their balance sheets before 2001 this was how they were 
allowed to report their balance sheets right so here see company p basically raised 55 million right it raised 55 million here but did its debt equity change guys calculate the debt equity did it change no it's 0 0.241 which was the debt equity at initiation before borrowing right sorry 0 0.24 which was the debt equity at the starting of the year guys are we getting the idea Asha, is coming to me? No, sir. doubt? No, sir. Kunal, no doubt? Anil, did you come No. So, now, the, basically, the company was able to borrow without increasing its debt equity. And company P would have been allowed to present balance sheet like this under the old rules applicable before the Enron scandal. Post Enron scandal, company P cannot do this. Rules have changed. Now look at the balance sheet of the SP. Okay. Guys, uh, is this SPE a VIE? Guys, is this SPV a VIE? Ashe Bol, is this SPE a VIE? हाँ सर होगा ना इसमें टोटल एसेट्स का लेस देन दस परसेंट है। वेरी गुड एक्विटी इज़ लेस देन टेन परसेंट ऑफ़ टोटल एसेट्स। यस वेरी गुड यू अंडरस्टूड दिस मैटर। एक्विटी इज़ ओनली फाइव टेन परसेंट ऑफ़ टोटल एसेट्स इज़ सिक्स इट्स एन दिस एसपी इज़ अ वीआई एंड सिंस इट्स अ वीआई we have to we have to do what prepare a console statement for parent yes we have to consolidate the financials of the spv in the books of company p right we have to consolidate the financials of the sp in the books of company p company p yes and we have to bring 100 percent of the assets liabilities revenue and expenses of this SPE in the books of company P using the acquisition method. Right. So now this is the balance sheet. This is the unconsolidated balance sheet of company P. So let me bring this. So in 2008, who made the SPVs? Who made the investment bank? He came to the books at that time. Then the Lehman Brothers came to the books. लीमन बदल तो इसे ही फेल हो गया ना लीमन बदल का फेलियर उन समय बहुत खराब हाल था मैं उसी साल सीएफए पास किया था अच्छा बहुत बुरा दिन था वो लेवल टू के बाद नौकरी लगा था और जून में पास किया था लेवल थ्री जून 2008 उसके बाद ही ये सेशन चालू। ओके, नाउ दिस इस दी बैलेंस शीट ऑफ कंपनी पी, अनकंसोलिडेटेड बैलेंस शीट ऑफ प्राइमरी बेनिफिशियरी कंपनी बी, एंड दिस इस दी बैलेंस शीट ऑफ दी एसपी बी। नाउ वी हैव टू कंसोलिडेट दिस, कंसोलिडेट दिस फाइनेंशियल्स। वी हैव टू ब्रिंग 100 Right, so we'll basically prepare a consolidated income statement. So how will you do that? Cash 85. Accounts receivable, sorry, this is consolidated balance sheet. Cash is your 85. Accounts receivable is 60. Then other assets are 40. Okay. 
total is 185 now let's look at the liability side we won't bring the equity of the SPV in our books right so debt 20 plus 55 75 Right, so we will report an equity of 83. We do not bring the equity of the SP in the consolidated balance sheet. Debt would become 20 plus 55, 75. And non current liability would be 27. Now add this up, this should add to 185. Right, so this is your consolidated balance sheet. And guys, this consolidated balance sheet is exactly the same. You know, it's exactly the same as the balance sheet if company P had borrowed directly against receivables. Guys, if company P had borrowed against receivables, this was the... Where was that balance sheet? Yes, this was the balance sheet. This balance sheet is basically the balance sheet if company P had borrowed money from the bank by pledging its receivables right this was the balance sheet which would have been you know this would have been the balance sheet if the company would have borrowed money again by borrowed money from the bank directly by pledging its receivables and this consolidated balance sheet is exactly the same as that balance sheet right it's exactly the same as this balance sir equity at here acquisition method mein lete the yaad hai na so we had said that for the purposes of consolidation we basically assume that the subsidiary ceases to exist and since it ceases to exist we do not bring it to we do not bring the equity of the subsidiary in the books of the parent yaad hai na yaad hai wo kunal point ha sir we do not bring the equity of the subsidiary in the books of the parent. In the same way, we are not bringing the equity of the SPV in the books of the primary beneficiary. So, mm -hmm. this consolidated balance sheet looks exactly the same as the balance sheet if company P had borrowed against, you know, the company P had borrowed directly against receivables. And the debt equity would also be the same. Debt equity lagao, hoi aega, point 0.9 ke aspas aega. Since balance sheet is the same, naturally the debt equity ratio would also be the same. Right? So this consolidated balance sheet looks exactly the same as the balance sheet if company P had borrowed directly from the bank against its receivables. Its debt equity would also be the same. Okay? So guys, this is how you account for an SPE. Right? If your SPE is proven to be a variable interest entity, then you will have to bring 100% of its assets, liabilities, revenue and expenses in the in the books of the primary beneficiary. And again, you know, if there are any intercompany transactions, right, if, uh, you know, those intercompany transactions, any profits on intercompany inter transactions would have, would, you know, they need to be eliminated. Any profits on intercompany transactions need to be eliminated. Right. So, guys, here see in this SP structure, uh, company P is selling its accounts receivable for 60 million. If it had sold it for more, right, then naturally the com you know company P would have made money. If company P would have sold its 60 million worth of accounts receivable at 65 or 70, then naturally company P would have made a profit of, if it would have sold this account receivable at 65, it would have made a profit of 5 million. If it would have sold this account receivable at 70, it would have made a profit of 10 million. But, you know, when we are consolidating, any gains due to inter-company transactions need, you know, they need to be eliminated. So, any gains, you know, if, if accounts receivable would have been sold at a gain, that gain would have to be reversed while consolidating the financials of the primary beneficiary and the SP. So, you know, this would ensure that users of financial statement get a very true and clear picture of what the primary, what the primary beneficiary is trying to do, right? 
So if if the primary beneficiary is uh, trying to do some fishing, consolidating the SP's financials won't allow him to do so, right? So big them. वो क्या कहते हैं ना कि दूध का दूध और पानी का पानी हो जाएगा, right? So post 2001, this was the rule that if SP is a VIE, you have to consolidate its financials. But before 2001. you know all this happened right you were not you know you you need not uh, consolidate the financials of the sp in your books theek hai guys are we good have we understood this bolo koi doubt hai nahi sir kaisa laga ye khatra na class samajh mein aaya